Good afternoon and welcome to my daily chat. Uh, this is episode number 994. Yes, six more to go. Um, today's topic though is about equality in relationship. And I don't mean equal rights, I mean what you get in what you get what you put in is what you get out, or what you get out is what you put in. So don't be lazy. And I'll explain more about that in a very simple way in a moment. Um, if you have seen my broadcast before, I'll tell you at the back end of the broadcast where you find the replays. Um, and probably going to drop a couple of ideas in the links for you to follow up on if you want to get some extra help. So this topic has been brewing for a while for me because I've been watching how people's relationships have become very lopsided. And sometimes it's not very obvious from the inside looking out. I've seen couples together where one dressed up, one didn't, where one was doing all the work, the other one wasn't. It's that imbalanced stuff that's frankly, how did they get to me? I'll be honest. And I like to see people have much more joy and celebration and equal support in a relationship. So I'm going to put some things on the table, what I recommend you might want to do if you want to have a healthy, equal relationship. First of all is to not overgive. I talked about this yesterday, the day before, and I was talking about how some people are so caught up in the desire to make the other person happy so they feel okay, that they overgive. And what I'm actually going to talk about in that's equality <clears throat> is actually not to do that, but to actually back up a little bit. Because the thing is, People think, well, you know, you're being lazy in a relationship, so you're not giving anything. Well, some people actually do it the other way around, as strange as this sounds. Some people are so caught up in the paradigm where they're worried the other person will leave them, so they love them so much in the hopes that they won't leave them, although oftentimes it backfires on them. But they're caught up in this trap where they're basically thinking if they don't keep giving, they're going to lose that person. Where in fact, you're up, they're, they're, for me, my experience has been is if you do, in fact, give up over giving, you actually stay in the relationship and the person stays with you. Because a lot of times when you're overgiving, and I've been on the receiving end of this before, it drives people away. I, I didn't stay because it was too much. It was, it was, and it wasn't the fact that it was, I wasn't ready for it. The other person was just wasn't conscious and aware of what they were doing. Because there is the other side of the coin where if you're not able to receive, then it doesn't matter how much they give you, you may feel like they're overwhelming you or it doesn't touch you. So that's another topic for another time, I think. It may come back in this one, we'll see. So this, the so first of all, the thing, the first point I'm going to make again is that if you've been overgiving, it's time to back it up and let go of that. Equality and contributing to a relationship is an is a balancing act in a way between two people. Now, one of the problems that happens in a relationship, and I was sharing this um, yesterday, the day before, in an interview about the challenge that men face. Yes, the challenge that men face, which is this: is that we get lazy. And I mean this in the sense that we don't have the perpetual desire to keep moving forward, which women do. And I say this in another way, because there's a balance between men and women where we are as men, especially masculine men, goal, desire, result oriented. Our focus is not so much on how to get there as the fact that we just want to be there and can be complete. And I joke about this saying how basically men are lazy because there's a wiring inside of us that is we get to go, we get to the goal, we, re, we, hit the, hit the, we achieve the mark, and then we relax. Put our feet up, crack a beer, watch TV, done. And so a lot of times what's happening for us is that we are efforting so much to create the goal, we want to put our feet up at the end of it. How does this apply to relationship, you may be asking? Well, first of all, let me just switch to the feminine side for a moment. Ladies in relationship, when you're in your feminine, you're actually enjoying the journey. That's kind of the joy of being the feminine. You have this experience of just being aware of everything's happening, having a good time, enjoying it. Sometimes not, but generally being aware of it all the time. So you have these two compete, two um, contrasting energies. On one side of the coin is the enjoying the journey, experiencing every moment and just having a great time without any particular focus on the end result. And the other side of the coin, you've got the, the one that's focused on the end result. Forget about what's going on in the journey. The way that disrupts relationships, besides the fact there's a difference going on, is the fact that for men, Oftentimes, being in the relationship is the goal that they set up in the first place. So they get into the relationship, and then they put the feet up, crack the beer, crack the beer, and watch TV, as they don't put any effort in. Now, a lot of ladies out there have been in a relationship with a man who basically suddenly got lazy when they got together, and it may have been over a period of time. It may not have been like immediately, you know, put the feet up and watch TV, as I said, but it might be the fact that what happened was he didn't keep putting the effort he did at the beginning of the relationship. There are many stories out there of relationships where people go into a relationship. Where people got into a relationship and basically, you know, stop working out, start gaining weight, not take care of themselves, stuff like that. That's part of the that's part of the symptoms too. But the reality is, a relationship is a constant for both partners. Focus on elevation. 
Meaning that for men, that goal that I talked about at the beginning is a goal that is continually and repeatedly um, reset so that the relationship continues to be fresh and new every time. And so for men, one of the biggest challenges is when you get to the relationship, it's like, what can you set up as another goal? What can be the next thing that you go for? What's the next step that you keep going towards, going towards, going towards, so you keep it fresh in the relationship? It's not just, now, I've said before, sometimes, it's good for the women to be aware of this, so when they have a man in their lives, they keep wanting to make sure there's more goals for him to focus on. It's up to the guy as well to plan for that. When you get in a relationship, being done isn't the focus. When you get in a relationship, What's the next thing you can do to contribute, to participate, to share, to be in romance that you can give to, the, give to your partner? That's one of the pieces. There's a second, third piece? There's several pieces to this. Another thing I'll throw on the table for you to consider in your relationship paradigm is can you make a game out of the, of the giving component? Meaning that can you and your partner play with who can outgive the other? Now, I don't mean necessarily in sharing in gifts, that's not my focus, but but if you, for example, know the five love languages, you may be aware of the fact that quality time or words of affirmation or phys physical touch are particularly um, common love languages. So can you be putting more effort into those and challenge your partner to meet you there? As in step up, step up, step up. That's part of the opportunity of a relationship, which is wonderful, to keep the energy focused on growing. The title I called it was basically you get out what you put in. Well, if you don't contribute to the relationship, if, you, if you, you're not getting out from what you put in, you're going to be taking the relationship. And that's going to be depleting, dysfunctional and, dysfunctional and um, draining of your partner. Not why I recommend it boy being in a relationship. Put some effort in into what you give, you gift, you serve, you inspire, you add to your relationship. So when you get something back out of it, it's from that, it's the reward for your actions, it's the, it's the gift from what you've been giving. That's a healthy way of being in a relationship. Now this is all true for both partners and there's no gender bias on this one. I've seen it on both sides, just to be clear. So recognizing that when you're in a relationship, it's a place to contribute to and a place to participate in fully. The relationship is not established, sorry, once a relationship is not is established, it's not a time to put your feet up and coast for either partner. Now I did say there's an, a um, default behavior that men generally participate in. Not always the case, but also some women do it too because some women are in their masculine do the same thing. So watch your polarity. That's a whole other conversation. We're going to have that one here. So what is it you want to have in a relationship? Do you want to be in a relationship where you don't have to do anything? And your partner does all the work? Good luck with that. That's extremely dysfunctional and codependent. Not recommended at all. I've talked about codependency more than enough times. Then what's on the other side of that is, do you want to be so efforting that your partner doesn't do any work either? That's what I'm saying. You want to be healthy in your boundaries. One of the biggest things about in being a healthy relationship is to have healthy boundaries with each other. Not just outside the relationship, but in the relationship too. When you have healthy boundaries with your partner, it allows you to have a place where you can meet in the middle in a clean, healthy way. So if some people get into a relationship, and again, talking about the codependency trap, they have no boundaries whatsoever, so they get steamrolled by their partner. It's important to have healthy boundaries, because the thing is, sometimes healthy relationships mean that you have time apart. What a concept. Sometimes a healthy relationship means that you take time to be on your own in the relationship, to have space for yourself. That's the thing about boundaries. You can have, you have a healthy boundary that renews and restores because sometimes when you have that space between partners, it renews the juice, it renews the chemistry, it restores the polarity, which you may have been missing for a while. So part of this is also to be aware of it because sometimes in a relationship, you may get into a place where you're a convenience and it's comfortable and you're not keeping it fresh and new. The problem with that is also is that it can be sometimes over a period of time so it becomes subtle and you're not even aware that it's happening. And that's a trap. Because when you go down that path, there may be no way back. So it's important to keep awareness from the day one through all the five days of the relationship. So it sounds like a relationship is a bit of work. And I'm not gonna argue, I'm not gonna lie to you, it is work, but it's work of the best kind if you're choosing to have a healthy, expansive, growing, oriented relationship. It requires participation on both partners to really thrive and grow if you're willing to do the work. Now, if you follow my talks, you know this is kind of lined up where I speak from. If you don't think you need this sort of stuff, then fine, just date however you want. But if you want something more, I highly recommend you follow what I suggest. Part of that is also a reminder, I'm gonna come back because I wanna keep doing this anytime, every time, is to put some effort into your own self-support. 
Because oftentimes we're looking for a relationship to be out there that we're going to keep pursuing, keep chasing, keep, put, keep putting our energy into the other person and not putting yourself first. And I'm, I'm adamant that putting yourself first, hi Danny, nice to see you, putting yourself first in your relationship is a priority so that you become able to give from the overflow effortlessly and easily. Because I said many times before, and it's in my book, relationship is not 50-50, it's 100-100. So just to take care of yourself before, during, and fully immersed in a relationship is a healthy way to be a partner in a relationship because then you're more present to be able to give and also to receive from your partner. Again, that balance thing I talked about. So loving yourself first, putting your own self first, putting your priorities on yourself, also takes the pressure off your partner to keep delivering some things that maybe you think that they should be doing for you, which maybe they shouldn't. So my invitation, my recommendation, my suggestion to you is putting your energy, your focus, your um, priority on taking care of yourself now if you're single and now if you're in a relationship. Yes, either way. My self-love meditation, which I talk about, um, I say simply, every day. <laughs> My self-love guided meditation, which I talk about every day, is, it will be in the comments because it's a reminder to you that putting yourself first requires a little conscious acting of, act of loving yourself first. You can say, well, I put myself first all the time, but do you actually do that really? Do you put time into your own self-care, self-support, self-love? If you take on my self-love meditation, it will help you. The guided meditation will absolutely put you in a place where your self-love comes first. You just got to do it. So that link will be in the comments for you to check out when I sign off. Um, if there's anything else, I think that's about it for this time. Finding balance in your relationship, finding love in what you want to do. Hi, Stacey, nice to see you. Finding yourself back in the right place so you can have a healthy relationship is what I'm about in my work. If you want to get some help, you reach out to me. Um, this is my daily chat, and this is the last week or so of these daily chats because I'm going to switch to something else afterwards, whether it's going to be weekly or in a private group. I'm not sure yet, but I'm now at episode 994, so there's six more to go to the 1,000th. Yes, next week I'll be at my 1,000th broadcast. Stay tuned for that. Um, if you want to join me live, I do this every day of the week usually. Well, up until next week, we'll see what happens after that. Um, every day of the week, seven days a week, at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page on Barry Selby on Facebook. If you want to watch my broadcasts in replay, you can watch them on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Um, well, the Facebook doesn't show all of them there. It shows only a couple of thousand, unfortunately. A couple of thousand. A couple of hundred. <laughs> a couple of thousand. I haven't done that many. A couple of hundred are there on my business page on Facebook. Please like my page and you can find some there. But if you want to watch all of them and every single one is visible, go to my YouTube channel. Um, which is Barry Sel sorry, youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby. Please subscribe to my channel and you can watch all of them under the playlist, Messages from the Masculine. Although Facebook yesterday didn't let me download my Facebook Live, so I can see what happens again today. So at least episodes zero, 1 through 992 are on my YouTube channel under Messages from the Masculine. Uh, 993 yesterday and 994 today. We'll see if I get them downloaded and be able to put them on YouTube. That's a question to be resolved shortly. And if you go over there and look, you'll find out shortly. Um, again, link in the comments for the self-love meditation. If you have any questions, comments about this topic, please put them in the comments below and also I'm going to sign off. If you want to get some extra help, if you want to get some support, guidance around love, self-love, self-support and healthy relationships, send me a message and uh, we'll talk. With that, I thank you for watching. As always, same time tomorrow, I'll be back doing the same thing, talking about something wonderful about love and relationships, especially about self-support. That's kind of a main thing of my topics nowadays. And uh, as a reminder, and as always, please, Take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow.